Hey there, everybody, and welcome to Looking Back, a segment where we check out great articles from past issues of Amazonas. I'm your host, Alex Rose, and today we're going to be talking about killifish in the genus Nothobronchius, the largest genus of African seasonal killies. Just a heads up, there are some ridiculously beautiful fish in this article, so get ready. If you have a hard copy of the magazine, you'll be looking for the January-February issue from 2023. Regardless of your subscription status, though, you can read this article for free on the Amazonas website by clicking on the link in the description below. Okay, to Africa we go. Know the bronchius killies can be found in tropical and subtropical areas of East and Central Africa. They live in pools and ponds, inundation zones and swamps, and they're sometimes found in association with human activity as well, even colonizing artificial drainage and roadside ditches. These seasonal killies are able to conquer habitats that are inaccessible to most other fish species because they dry up for an extended part of the year. They're able to survive in these ephemeral conditions because they have evolved early onset maturity extremely rapid growth, and egg development with delayed hatching options. Note the bronchius furzeri is actually the fastest maturing vertebrate ever discovered, reaching sexual maturity in the wild in hardly more than two weeks after hatching. And due to this unique survival strategy, it's a model organism for research into aging, even in people. This rapid maturation unfortunately means that they don't really live too long. Even in ideal conditions in captivity, you'd be lucky to keep any Nothobronchius alive for more than a year. While these killifishes can be housed in peaceful planted community tanks with similarly sized fishes, most aquarists keep them in species tanks where they are more likely to reproduce. In the wild, Nothobronchius killifishes spawn shortly before the dry season begins, at the time when their aquatic habitat usually dries up. Their eggs undergo delayed development, called diapause, with variable timing, and there are good reasons for this. The dried up body of water doesn't always refill at the same time every year, um, so the rains can begin too early or even fail completely. Nevertheless, the species will survive, even though the parent fish are long since gone. When favorable conditions do return, in some species, even after years, the next generation of fish hatch to quickly spread again in the habitat. These conditions need to be replicated in captivity if the eggs are to hatch, so they need to be removed from the tank, stored in slightly damp peat moss for weeks to months at a time, and then returned to water to hatch once the eggs have eyed up or display a dark mark that's an indication the offspring are ready to go. Some fish stores will occasionally stock some of the more common species of Nothobronchius killies, like Agrisai and Rakovii, but for anyone interested in keeping the rarer species, it would probably be best to reach out to members of National Killifish Associations. These organizations provide not only detailed information on the provenance of their killifishes, but their members successfully breed many species and special populations that you wouldn't otherwise readily find in the hobby. Well, I'm smitten, and maybe you are too. If you want to get the full story on these fascinating fishes, you can check out the 2023 January-February issue of the magazine, as well as the link to the article in the description below. Anyone can purchase back issues by going to our website and looking in the shop drop-down menu. Have you kept any species of Nothobronchius killies before? I haven't, only Aphiosemian so far, but I hope that changes. I'd love to hear about your experiences with Killies in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this little blast from pages past. And if you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.